What up? Today I'm going to go do a little tutorial on a Cisco Packet Tracer. I'm using Packet Tracer 6.1.1. 6.2 is actually out now. It's had a few changes. They added a, a Java support for web pages, some other shit, cell phone tower. I don't know. I don't use 6.2 because my save files won't transfer over. So I'm stuck on 6.1.1 for what I've already got going and I don't really don't really care to go any deeper into the new features on 6.2 but a little bit about the program in general uh, Packet Tracer is a network simulator not a network emulator as opposed to say GNS3 this does not actually run Cisco IOS uh, operating system it's just a program Cisco made to uh, help with the CCNA certification so if you've ever used a physical router or a switch played around in there you'll notice with this a lot of features are missing because this is very specific to the CCNA certification so pretty much if a topic is covered on that exam it should be covered in here the configurations and features for that certification will be able to be used here but nothing beyond that you can't really go in depth with this program so to start off, this is the work area, just a blank, big blank screen. And the first thing you want to do is probably add some devices. So the bottom left here shows all the devices you can add. Routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices, cables for them, in devices or hosts, security appliance, the 5505 ASA firewall, uh, WAN emulation clouds, custom devices, and a multi-user cloud for connecting your instance of Packet Tracer to say a study buddy's instance of Packet Tracer or uh, if you're in a lab for Network Academy the instructor. So to add a device you simply click on click on the section of devices you want say you want a router you can click and click and it'll add it or you could click and drag and my favorite is if you hold control so let's say we want to add a couple switches to this 3560 if you hold control and then click on it, come up here, and every time you click, it'll add that device. You can do the same thing for the cables as well. So if you hold control over a certain cable type you want, then you can just click and cable up your network fast. It saves a lot of time. I didn't figure that out for a while. I'm kind of retarded, though. But let's add some uh, hosts in here. So we've got, say you want just a regular PC. Here's a PC, maybe a laptop, server, or two. You could add in even an IP phone if you wanted to, VoIP, even a TV, although we can't connect that to what we got here, but that's a whole other topic. So, after you've added them out here, if you click on a device, it'll pop up the device settings. So, you've, normally you've got about three tabs. Physical tab, this just shows the physical device. And the configuration, this is kind of for quick configuring of uh, basic settings. So if we, if we go to a fast season at 0, 01, you can go ahead and configure, turn off uh, auto configuration of speed and duplex, switch it to full, half, and at the bottom here it'll pop up uh, commands that you'd actually input. So if you don't know how to do like one of these simple things, come in, you're like, oh, I don't know how to use the command line and change the duplex of a port, and you just hit f uh, f duplex full, and down at the bottom it'll show you commands actually would have had to have been entered to achieve this. So that's that's pretty cool. Did I even touch on the command line interface tab? Probably not. This is where you spend the majority of your time in the devices. It's here. So that's how you navigate that shit. So with this, there's two views, logical and physical. Right now we're in the logical view. So if we switch over to physical, this just kind of allows you to arrange your network in a more kind of a realistic realistic setting so you can create cities you can create buildings rooms within those buildings and it'll show the devices in a physical layout other than your logical view here so there's four tiers to this this is the inner city and here's the icon for your home city you can move that around you can add some more have like two cities say we got shit I don't know St. Louis and Dallas and you can go into go into the city and then here is would be your buildings within the cities with the they're called corporate offices in this program but you could add your buildings like location A, location B, partner, whatever 
go into the buildings, and then here's the lowest level, the wiring closets. You have um, what's called a working wiring closet, so any device you add in the logical view will go into your active wiring closet and you will have to move it where you want later. It's actually a really big pain in the ass, so I, I've only done the physical view once and one of my networks took me forever, so it's, it's kind of, it's cool, but it's shitty at the same time. But if you go into the wiring closet view, then this will show a, f a physical layout of the devices you've added. If you want to move devices around to different cities, different buildings, you'll have to hit move object or control M. Or is it control M or shift M? Shift M. You hit shift M and click on the device you want to move. Let's say we want to move this TV. You got to go through this really shitty drop down menu way of moving it. So corporate office. Right here is the main wiring closet. This is the one that's in use right now, the working closet. So if we want to move it to another one, click on it. So that went to one of these, yeah, here. You can rename all of these so it's more organized, and I'll probably show you an example of that later. But that's that's the main idea of the physical view. Uh, now also in the physical view, uh, if you're running 6.2, you can actually add devices straight into physical view. Can't do that in 6.11, so if I tried to dra uh, drag some shit out here, like it won't do, won't do shit. All right, let's go to the options menu. If you go to options and preferences, then this is some uh, common, commonly used settings for the program. We got uh, show animation. Actually, I'm not really sure what that does, so ignore it. Uh, play sound. If you have that enabled, then it will play some really cheesy and annoying sounds for every time you click up a device or menu. Like, listen to this shit. Why, why would you want this? I don't know. I don't use it. Alright, show device model labels. So right now we've only got uh, show device name labels up, so this will tell you what the devices are. If you enable this, it'll tell you the model of the devices. I leave that off. I like, like my network to look simple, so I don't do that. Here you can do always show port labels. And what this does is... Alright, let's cable this up real fast. So as I'm cabling this to the switch, you can see the port labels coming up. Oop. Fast Ethernet, whatever, whatever, whatever. Gig 1.1. One, one. I don't know if I went over the auto cable feature. Um, if you select this, then it automatically selects the proper cable. So as you can see, I was using auto cable the whole time. So we've got straight through on all the in all the proper places between the routers. It automatically selected a crossover cable, and it also automatically selects a port number in sequential order. So Port one's free. You click on the switch. It's going to put it on port one. You don't get to pick what port you plug it into. You can click on the manual cables here. It's like a crossover cable between these two switches, and this will actually show a drop-down menu. You can select what port you want to plug it into on both ends. All right, where was I before I forgot about that shit? Oh yeah, the options menu, preferences. So port labels. That'll just always. It'll keep them always up. I don't like it because it clutters shit. Uh, disable the auto cable. This will, you won't be able to use the auto cable feature if you have this on or disabled, whatever. This just makes it more realistic and I guess harder. You don't have that luxury of just the program automatically selecting the best cable for you. Um, over here on the right side, you've got show link lights. Turn that off. You won't be able to tell if the uh, links are up or down. Uh, play telephony sound is another option when you uh, throw IP phones in there you can call between them and this pretty much just tells you if it's gonna ring or not when you do that turn that off you won't hear shit uh, show QoS stamps on packets when you inspect packets in this program this just tells you whether it's gonna show the quality of service stamps or not below that show port labels when mouse over always have this on uh, whenever you mouse over a cable segment should fucking do something. <laughs> Anyways, it should pop up uh, the port numbers for that cable, but apparently it's not. Oh, I unchecked it by accident. Never mind. All right. So yeah, you mouse over a cable segment, and it's gonna pop up the 
port numbers on each end for you. I always have that turned on, that's nice. Um, enable cable length effects. So there's actually a cable length limitation in Packet Tracer, similar to real life. So the physical view has actually kind of like a metric system that calculates distance between cities. So if you have a switch in one city, a switch in another one, in the physical view it'll actually have sort of like a distance metric for that. So we'll say they're like a hundred miles apart. If you if you in logical view did a just straight cat5 cable run between one router and the other and in physical view one router is in st louis and the other is in dallas then that link's not going to come up because obviously you can't just take one straight long as cat5 cable hundreds of miles and expect it to come up in real life but if you check that off then it won't give a shit and it won't care if you laid one straight cat5 cable from new york to la it'll still work the last option here is to use the command line interface tab as the default tab. So right now whenever you click on a device it'll pop up the physical view, but if you enable that it'll take you straight into the command line, ready to go. Okay, past that we've got the uh, different tools on the right here. If you're wondering what those do, this is your top one, this is your standard select tool where you can click on click on devices, pop that up, move them around, whatever. Uh, right here is the move layout tool. I actually, this did scroll up and down the page. I'm not really sure what it does now. It's not working for me. Uh, below that's your notes tool. So you can just add random notes to your network layout, whatever you want an IP address because there's no option to automatically show the IP address of a uh, device so you can just add notes everywhere, put your IPs in, whatever. Below that is the deletion tool. Whatever you click on with this will take it out of your network. Easy enough. Control Z just like every other program can undo that. Control Shift Z however is the redo button. And it'll only go back one, uh, one undo. So if you delete three devices, you're shit out of luck for the first two you deleted. Right here is the inspection tool. So if we click on one of these devices, then you can quick bring up, say, the routing table, ARP table, NAT table, quality of service queues, just a quick reference for all these. Obviously none of these are configured, so we don't have anything in our tables right now. But they'd show up if you did. So here's the drawing, drawing tool. This one I use a lot to make my uh, network layouts look pretty. You can select a fill color or no fill color. And this one you can just like draw some shit. And like, whoa, look at this. I'm going to circle this server and this router. Yay. If you want it to look more perfect, there's actually a circle tool. Put some circles around shit. You want to segregate it with a box? Oh, you can do that too. And you want to change the color? Whoa. The freaking customization options are just limitless here. <laughs> You can also just draw some lines, like X through that shit, whatever. Okay, what's next here? What have we not gone over? Oh, the resizer tool under that. So after you draw all these shitty boxes, uh, it'll pop. The resizer tool will pop up uh, these red blocks on the edge, and you can change the size. This is the only way to change them. If you have your normal tool selected, it'll just move the whole box. You can't change the size unless you have that selected. Okay, PDUs is what is under here. So this is just kind of like troubleshooting verification tools that you can use in your network. Uh, I'm going to go to mine I already have going for this. So this first one here is a simple PDU. It's pretty much, This one is just an ICMP ping uh, between two devices. So if I want to ping between Backbone A router that I've got here and the Backbone H router way over here and just to see if they have connectivity I'll click on Backbone A, originate it from there and Backbone H and then down here it'll tell me that my ping was successful the one below it is a complex PDU so instead of it just sending a regular ICMP message here it'll pop up a box and you'll select the protocol you want to use so let's say what I want to send SMTP message between the two 
and I can set the destination address, the time to live, and all that shit. So that's just that's just a more in-depth PDU. You can customize that. Okay, the two two uh, types of time you can use in this program. It's got real time and a simulation time thing. Uh, it's down here in the bottom right. This guy that looks like a spaceman. You click that and you'll go into a uh, simulation mode. So what this does is it uh, slows time down to a packet by packet basis. So if I wanted to run a simple PDU between F and G, click that and you'll see that it shows the packet or frame actually queued up here on Backbone F. And you can take a look at the, the different layers, different uh, fields of the packet. Here's the actual view of the packet. Here it kind of just gives you a rough overview of what's going to happen. So at the bottom it gives a description like the ping process starts the next ping request. The ping process creates an ICMP echo message request. Blah, blah, blah. So this gives you an overview of what's actually happening. You can learn from that. Um, you can do the auto capture play or capture forward. Uh, auto capture will just increment it automatically. The next one you can actually tell it when to forward the packets. So there you can see backbone F sent to backbone H. You can still go through, you can see the contents of that packet for every every step it takes through the network. So there's the full thing. It pinged backbone G and then sent it all the way back to backbone F. And I could ins inspect that packet whenever throughout that. Now after you've initiated a whatever traffic of any kind, after that completes, then it's going to start just showing you random random ass uh, packets being sent throughout your network. So those two pings had just completed, so now it's showing me that a couple other routers are sending OSPF requests. Or not requests, packets, whatever. And there's actually a buffer limit. Uh, 100, 100 of these can be generated, yep, right here, before your buffer gets full and you have to clear it out. This is a disadvantage of having a large network in here. Um, other than that, uh, there's clusters. As you can see here, I've got a lot of clouds. These at the bottom are actually multi-user clouds to connect with uh, some people I study with. So I can connect into their network when we're all together. Uh, these at the top are actually just clusters. And what I mean by that is, say you've got some kind of network set up here, and you just kind of want to clean up that shit. You, just, you want it to be a part of your network, but you don't want it to take up so much space on your screen. You can actually select all of it, go up here, click on new cluster, and it'll bring it down to a cloud, which you can go in and out of to see those devices. So like in this network, I've got a few clusters. Here's a big network in the cluster. So this is like my backbone area. This is another network off of that. And here's yet another network off of that. So I have them segregated. Oh, and said I was going to give an example of the physical view. Here is kind of what you can do with it. This makes it make a little more sense. So here we've got like a map of the US. And this just kind of gives you more of a physical physical view of how cities can be connected and all that. So let's say we go to St. Louis. Like here's some buildings in St. Louis. And we'll go into like the internet backbone building. And then here's actually your equipment in the rack. So that just kind of makes it more real. Uh, other than that, I think that's about all the uh, basic, basic shit you can do with Packet Tracer and whatnot. Uh, there's a few other. You can create custom devices and shit. She's pretty much just custom uh, network interface cards, which I also didn't say anything about. So here's what you can can do here on the left of the physical view when you open up a device there's different modules you can plug in there to plug them in you have to turn the device off uh, remove remove a module if there are any and so here you can have a analog analog module a copper ethernet fast ethernet gig ethernet fiber serial you can put whatever whatever your network needs you can throw in there as long as it's on the left there some routers, like the 2911, are actually kind of limited as to what modules you can throw in. But, yep. Yeah, um, plan to make a video soon on just a basic network configuration. Hopefully this 
showed a little bit of how to just use the program. But thanks for watching, anyways.